let's take a look at what could be the most modified F-15 ever. The F-15 given serial number 710290 had perhaps the most diverse range of duties of any F-15 ever built. Having rolled off the assembly line all the way back in 1973, it was the first two-seat F-15 Eagle and the sixth F-15 built by McDonnell Douglas. Initially being designated as TF-15, the aircraft would go on to serve as a trainer, a testbed for the F-15E Strike Eagle, a technology demonstrator, and even a NASA research aircraft for several programs. We will look at those roles today, but first, let's take a look at the specifications of this airplane during its service with the NASA Active Program. Length, 63 feet, 8 inches. Height, 18 feet, 6 inches. Wingspan, 42 feet, 10 inches. Canard span, 25 feet, 7 inches. Horizontal tail span, 28 feet, 3 inches. Maximum speed, 1,323 knots or Mach 2. Empty weight, 35,000 pounds. Takeoff weight, 47,000 pounds. Service ceiling, 60,000 feet. Engine thrust class, each Pratt & Whitney F100 PW229 turbofan engines equipped with Pratt & Whitney PYBBN three-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles, 17,800 pounds of thrust dry or 29,000 pounds thrust with afterburner. The F-15 given serial number 710290 rolled off the assembly lines and into history in 1973 as the sixth F-15 ever produced and the first two-seater F-15. Intended to be used as a trainer for the then all-new Eagle, this model was given the designation TF-15. That alone may have been enough to make it a notable Eagle, but almost from its beginnings this airplane was destined for research and discovery. In the late 1970s, the development teams at the Langley Research Center began exploring the concepts and benefits of thrust vectoring. These studies looked at 2D thrust vectoring along with thrust reversing, and as early as 1982, a model of an F-15 with 2D nozzles was produced. Shortly thereafter, aircraft 710291 was fitted with 2D nozzles and canards and flown as a proof of concept. Based on this, a contract was awarded to further study these enhancements and this became known as the STOL MTD, or Short Takeoff and Landing Maneuver Technology Demonstrator. Prior to becoming part of the STOL MTD program, aircraft 71-290 was busy serving as a testbed for what would become the F-15E Strike Eagle. The Strike Eagle was McDonnell Douglas' response to the Enhanced Tactical Fighter Program, or ETF. Its competitor was a General Dynamics F-16XL, a beloved aircraft that lost out due to its single engine and higher production costs due to its modified wing. If you haven't already, check out my video on the F-16XL. Getting back to the STOL MTD program and aircraft 71290. In 1988, as part of the program, the aircraft was given the distinct red, white, and blue paint scheme, making it one of the most recognizable aircraft ever to take to the skies above Edwards Air Force Base. The STOL MTD program had several goals. Aside from the benefits of having a highly maneuverable airplane in a dogfight, one of the key drivers of the program was an effort to improve ABO, or air-based operability. ABO deals with the survival and performance of combat aircraft operating out of damaged or partially destroyed airfields. The S2L MTD program looked at ways that the aircraft could take off from bomb damaged runways that were also wet, which made for highly challenging conditions that would render most conventional aircraft unusable. By using the aircraft's canards, reversible thrust engines, and exhaust nozzles that could deflect thrust up to 20 degrees, the STL MTD program achieved some remarkable results, including controlled flight at angles of attack as high as 85 degrees, in-flight rapid deceleration caused by thrust reversers, takeoffs with rotation speeds as low as 42 miles an hour, and landing on 1,650 feet of runway as opposed to the Eagle's standard 7,500 feet. All of these goals would be accomplished by 1991. 
It is interesting to point out that the forward canards used on 71-0290 were actually derivatives of the FA-18's stabilators. Upon completion of the STL MTD program, NASA acquired the aircraft on loan from the Air Force in 1993. Under NASA, the aircraft was redesignated number 837. However, upon closer inspection of the tail, you can still see the Air Force serial number 71-290. Additionally, since it was a full-time research vehicle at this point, the aircraft was given the classification of NF-15B. In service with NASA, the engines were replaced with Pratt & Whitney F-100 229s. The F-100 229 is used on production F-15E Strike Eagles and the ones used on 837 included thrust vectoring nozzles that allowed the exhaust to be rotated 20 degrees in any direction, while adding minimal weight from the production engines. In this configuration, the aircraft first served in the Advanced Control Technology for Integrated Vehicles or ACTIVE program. The ACTIVE program investigated pitch yaw balance beam nozzles or PYBBN, along with Advanced Control Logic programming. Using Aircraft 837, the active program yielded some interesting milestones. In 1996, the first supersonic yaw vectoring flight was achieved, with pitch and yaw vectoring at speeds of up to Mach 2. On later flights, yaw vectoring was obtained at angles of attack as high as 30 degrees. Additionally, successful development and testing of an adaptive performance software program occurred. This performance optimization program, which is part of the aircraft's flight control software, would automatically calculate the best trim or settings for the thrust vectoring nozzles along with aircraft control surfaces to minimize drag. The software was so effective, on its last flight in 1996, a speed increase of Mach 0.1 was gained with no increase in engine power at 30,000 feet. Subsequent test data from Aircraft 837 was used to improve the F-15E's Strike Eagle performance on ground attack missions. The active program ran from 1993 through 1999, and following the conclusion of the active program, Aircraft 837 would continue to serve as a testbed for NASA. Next up was the High Stability Engine Control or High Stack program, which looked at a computerized system that would allow the aircraft's computers to enact engine trim changes in order to prevent sudden in-flight engine compressor stalls, which would lead to engine failure. The concept was successfully validated over a dozen test flights. Following HiStec, the aircraft also participated in high-speed research acoustics. An ongoing challenge with commercial supersonic travel is the loud sonic booms that are produced. At the time, the high-speed civil transport was a proposed second-generation American supersonic jetliner that was being worked on. Since Aircraft 837 had thrust vectoring nozzles, it was thought that a solution could be found to reduce engine noise. The theory was that by fully expanding the exit area of the nozzles, the hot jet exhaust entering the cooler air would reduce noise. Interestingly, this involved flying the aircraft in precise patterns over an array of 30 microphones, which were spread out over a mile at Edwards Air Force Base. The research, while promising, did not translate into the new supersonic transport. After the acoustics research concluded, up next was the Intelligent Flight Control System or IFCS project. The project designated Aircraft 837 as its primary research aircraft in 1999. The IFCS project implemented a neural network along with control algorithms that would diagnose and react to changes in aircraft's ability and performance for both normal and failure conditions. This adaptive neural network algorithm learns the new flight parameters in real time and helps the pilot either maintain or regain control as the situation warrants. Another research project that A37 was involved in was the Space-Based Range Demonstration and Certification. This project was part of the Exploration Communications and Navigation Systems program. The project focused on developing and demonstrating space-based communication links for tracking data, telemetry, and flight termination systems. The hope was that by developing a space-based communication system, operational costs of ground-based stations would be reduced, along with the development of applications for manned and unmanned aircraft systems. The final research project conducted by Aircraft 837 was the Lift and Nozzle Change Effects on Tail Shock, 
or Landsets project. The goal of the Landsets project was to generate computer models that could assist in developing supersonic civilian aircraft that were reduced noise created by sonic booms while traveling over land. Aircraft 837 participated by having another NASA NF-15B measure the shockwaves coming from Aircraft 837's exhaust, wake, and tail surfaces. And once again, while the research showed promising results, practical civilian supersonic travel remained out of reach. Aircraft 710290, aka 837, the sixth ever F-15 Produce and the first two-seater F-15, took to the skies one last time on January 30th, 2009. Having an illustrious career that spanned 35 years, which included 14 at NASA Dryden, it was time for 837 to fly off into the sunset. And as far as its legacy, it was the first aircraft to demonstrate a self-repairing flight control system. The first aircraft to fully integrate an inlet engine flight control system and the first aircraft to have a propulsion-only flight control system. Along with this, it served as a trainer and the testbed for the F-15E Strike Eagle. You'd be hard-pressed to find an F-15 that has served more roles and contributed so much to aviation research. Blue skies and tailwinds. Thank you for all you've done, 837. What do you think? Would you like to see a series on NASA test planes? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a Patreon or make a purchase from the merchandise links below. Stay safe and see you next time.